Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coach Show here on KOXE. I am Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions Head Football Coach Athletic Director Sammy Burnett, and it is here, sir. It sure is. Football season has arrived for 2024. First practices are in the book. How did today go? Uh, I thought our kids had a phenomenal attitude. They came out with a desire to work, uh, and I thought it was a great day. Uh, the worst part of practice is at the end when you got to start that conditioning and get back into the shape you need to play on Friday nights. But other than that, our kids pushed through it, but I thought we had a great day. Well, of course, this is your seventh season now, so everybody's and pretty much all the coaching staff is back, so everybody knows what to expect. So what is a first day of practice like for you all opposed to, you know, a new coach coming in trying to teach new schemes? Well, it was really neat. I already had that conversation. I mean, we're out there. We already had a team session on offense. Uh we had a screen session on offense where we were throwing screens for a certain period of time, and then we moved up down the field uh, with a couple of run plays and multiple pass plays. Uh, for our kids to already understand and know what's going on is big. I, the comment I made was this time of the year we're usually teaching routes <coughs> and concepts and then trying to coordinate that with the play and get kids to remember the plays and all that. Our kids' retention is great. Offensively, I thought we had a great day. Uh, defensively, same way. We're out there running pass hole. Uh, with the defense out there, it doesn't matter if it's your ones or your twos or whoever's left. You know, when you're out there getting reps, our kids understand coverage. We ran one coverage a day, uh, and kids just understand it. They're going through it. Uh, so saw some really good things, uh, watching linebackers work on fits and pulls and, 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 and you know, understanding their roles was big. Uh, D-line doing the same thing, but yet also working on stunt packages that we would never be uh, able to do right now. It would be almost, you know, two weeks down the road. So... I think we're far along. I think our kids' retention is great, and uh, I just think we're we're just we're rolling now. And our kids understand, like you said, this is year seven. Our kids know what we're doing. They understand how we want to do it with a sense of urgency that we want to have, uh, what we expect in practice, uh, and, you know. And they're just going out there and fulfill the goals that we have for them. So I couldn't ask for a better day. Um, I drew a blank. What was I going to say? Look at that. Oh, any surprises that stood out to you one way or the other today? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I was blessed to get some things uh, donated to us from uh, Hibbit Sports, some things that they weren't going to use, so I thought it would be a great opportunity, some mouthpieces and things like that uh, that they didn't need anymore, that they were overstocked or whatever the reason, but I was wanting to use them as an incentive for, a, you know, a, say a, a leader of the, of the day. Uh, and Tristan Stevens is a young man that has served his time, you know, in the sub varsity. Uh, all of a sudden, I saw the switch, you know, flick on. Uh, the power came on in off season, and, and he started developing into the player that we hoped he would. Uh, and at the end, he's a lineman for us. And at the end, when we're running sprints, he was winning the sprints. And then not only was he doing that, he was encouraging others to have great body language and it's mind over matter and, and the things that we have been preaching to him for several years. And to see him step up and do that, uh, was very in encouraging to me. He's a young man that we're going to have to have. Uh, when you look at us across the board, skill-wise, offensively, defensively, special teams, I think we're in a really good place. Uh, our our heartbeat is always our offense and defensive line, and we'll go as they go. And uh, to see one of them step up and, and uh, learn a leadership role today, I thought was really big because I think they understand how important their role is for our team. So uh, all in all, uh, I really thought it was a phenomenal day. So about how many kids y'all have come out? Uh, we had around uh, 130. Uh, we expect that to be a little more. We always have some guys that have some things going on, uh, and you have some younger kids that don't really know what's going on. Uh, so we didn't have the numbers that we projected for the freshmen. I think they're around 40. I think they're going to have a, you know possibly 10 more freshmen, and then in a couple of sophomores, juniors. Uh, that are on the JV, uh, I think there's about five more of those. So we, we projected anywhere from 140 to 150. Right now we're probably sitting just a hair over 130. Okay. Um, <clears throat> of course, y'all are on the field for a few hours, but a lot more goes into a day of practice than just that. So kind of talk about what else happens other than on the field work. Well, you know, we get them there early. Our kids show up early. They make sure they have their equipment needs taken care of, their injury needs taken care of with Doc. Then we get on the field and we practice. Once practice is done, uh, an example, we'll go straight to uh, – uh, on days when there's not a weight day where we throw in the weight room, uh, we'll go in with our kids and show them film of that practice so they get immediate uh, instruction uh, for improvement for the next day. Also, our receivers have set a goal to go out and catch 100 footballs, 100 tennis balls, and 100 ping pong balls. So 
they were probably out there, you know, 45 minutes to an hour longer catching, just catching balls. You know, our skilled kids out there catching balls, so uh, they're doing that. While uh, and then they'll go to uh, receiver meetings, running back meetings, uh, secondary meetings. All of our kids break up and they go to meetings immediately and talk technique. They talk uh, film that we just uh, use with a drone to, to video our sessions and and just try to we try to get things fixed before Friday gets here. So. Uh, every day is a learning day. Once they're done, our coaches get together, we'll meet, uh, what went well, what didn't go well, things that we need to fix. Are we on course on install, uh, <coughs> excuse me, offensively or defensively, or do we need to go back and, and uh, go over something, uh, say, that didn't happen well today and do it tomorrow? So it's an ongoing session with that. We meet for a while to do that with coaches, and then they're going to break up and start working on their practice schedule for the next day uh, and communicate how we're going to, how it's going to function uh, for all three uh grade levels right now so it's JB varsity and freshmen they're all at a different level varsity is doing a certain thing that's different than the JV a little bit and then uh, the freshmen of course are learning a totally it's not a new offense their playbook just opened up tremendously compared to what they we asked them to do in the junior high so uh, they'll work on all three of those practice plans and schedules uh, everything is scheduled in five minute segments and everybody knows where they're supposed to be and where they're going and what they're doing uh, through the course of practice so it takes a lot of time to Organize uh, how you're going to make it work to where you can get groups together, whether it's linebackers and secondary or quarterbacks and running backs, but you got to have quarterbacks going football as receivers, so they have to get all that coordinated and put in the practice plan for the next day. So it takes a lot of time. Uh, when you talk about a 30-minute segment, say you're working on, uh, say, team screens and then team offense, it's going to take those coaches a couple hours just to get that prepared. So that's why there's always a sense of urgency in that time allotted that you get things done because it takes so long to prepare for that. You don't want to waste the time you have to get it in. So is there anything specific or particular you want to see the rest of the week in practice? Uh, what I really want to see is their bodies are going to start getting sore. They're going to get tired by Wednesday. Usually Wednesday is the worst day of the first week that you have because bodies become extremely sore and tired uh, and they break down a little bit. Uh, you just want to see the mentality, uh, the attitude to come out here uh, every morning and start going to work. I mean, you're going to be there uh, for an hour and a half or two two hours, whatever our time is. Uh, it's two hours. And uh, uh, what are you going to do with that two hours worth of time? Are you going to get better at the position you play, become a master at your craft, uh, be mentally focused and strong to where you can overcome the fatigue and the adversity that you're facing with your body, uh, but also get yourself to understand that you can press through it and build that mental toughness that we feel we got to have to be successful. So. For me, I think their attitudes are great. They're, they're right where they want to be skill-wise. And uh, the fact that they understand what they're supposed to do, just keep working on the technique to become better at what you do. And then uh, the mental capacity to go out there and press through the tough times because uh, it's going to be tough. This first week is usually really tough on them. Yeah, my uh, body broke down before lunch today. Yeah. so <laughs> Mine was sweating profusely. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, let's talk about what season ticket sales for the general public started yeah, today. Uh, yeah, season tickets 8 to 12 and then 130 to 4. Uh, there's two ways to do that this year. Uh, that's Monday through Thursday. Uh, you can either go online to brownwoodisd.org and purchase your tickets that way. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can also go to Central Support. And uh, Lisa Hosso is housed over there because of the traffic and construction going on. She's housed over there now so that... Uh, she can, they can handle the traffic coming in and out, and uh, you can go to her office and get tickets uh, like you've done in the past as well. But uh, it's season tickets, or tickets are on sale now for everybody, uh, 8 to 12, one thirty to 4, Monday through Thursday. All right, and of course, volleyball also got started today. Yeah, got to speak with uh, Coach Lovelady, very excited. She has right now right around 60 kids, uh, so a good problem to have. Uh, we started working on maybe finding some uh developing another team, uh, finding a schedule for them, uh, give them opportunities. I don't believe in cutting kids. I think if a kid's willing to come out and go through the practice and do everything we ask them to, handle themselves in the classroom in a way that, that we feel is uh, you know, adequate for the athletic program, we feel those kids should have an opportunity to play. Uh, so uh, very excited for her. She's, she's excited with the talent level that she has coming in and the fact that she has great numbers. So with that comes the problem, well, now let's work on another schedule for them, whether it's a JVB or whatever that may be, uh, to where our kids have an opportunity to play. Uh, they may not have a full schedule because uh, they play 30 games. You may only be able to get to find 10 games for them, but at least they'll have an opportunity to play games. And then the other option that we have that has worked very real successful for us or for me in the past is, uh, you know, you, you play them on a Wednesday night, 
you split the, the ladies up or the men up, whatever sport it is, and you put them in a maroon jersey, a maroon uniform, and a white uniform, and, and we play a game uh, so that they're going to get reps. The, the parents get to come in and watch the game for free. Uh, our coaches usually officiate those games, and they, they go to work, and as competitive as it can be, they're still working on uh, developing their skills that they need to be to get to the next team that they want to be on. So I find that very productive. So there's a way to fill in games too. But if our kids, our, our attitude or my mentality is if a kid's willing to come to practice they're, they're, and they're willing to do the things that they're supposed to do, then they've earned the opportunity to play at the sub-varsity. So uh, for us, I think that uh, sub-varsity games are important for kids to play. Uh, on the boys' side, you know, in football, we have enough, we have four teams, and that's the same thing. It gives kids an opportunity to continue to grow and develop that may not have matured at the point that they want to yet. So, you know, I was a late bloomer. Uh, for them to have an opportunity to continue to sharpen their skills so that they can get to the next level and get to where they want to be at. Uh, I remember I started, when I moved back, I was put on the B team because uh, I wasn't known as well at the high school. You know, I, I was gone for two years and, and came back and I was on the B team and thank goodness because I got to play 10 games and when the next year came around, I got to play a couple games on the A team, but the next year came around, I was prepared to, to make the team and, and I had an opportunity to do that and I did, but if I would have sat on the bench and did nothing for 10 games, I wouldn't have had the skills that I needed to be successful. So I think it's important that our kids get opportunities to play. We're going to do everything and everything possible that we can to give them an opportunity to play and not just go to practice and go to a game and sit on the bench. Uh, our policy is as well, if, if a kid's on the JV, they're going to play. At some point in that game, they're going to play. And I don't mean for a minute and a half or whatever. I mean they're going to get in the game and they're going to play. So uh, to keep your roster smaller, to give kids more playing time, I think there's a great avenue in trying to pick up some more games. Uh, we'll call Abilene, we'll call San Angelo, we'll call anybody else uh, that may be looking for some games and pick them up here or there uh, the best we can. But yet we also have the opportunity to uh, play them at home uh, and let our coaches officiate that. And like I said, they're going to dress out and it's a game. And we're going to go try to win that game. And the, the White's going to try to beat the Maroon or whatever it may be. But uh, it's, it's a great problem to have. I'm excited for uh, because those that type of numbers is huge, and we've really been trying to grow the numbers in our girls' programs. Well, speaking of playing games, tennis starts their regular season Thursday. Yeah, first two I, matches. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coach Hutchins is a new head tennis coach. He's doing a great job with them. He, he's dotting his I's and crossing his T's and trying to make sure he learns the paperwork side of that. I, I submitted his eligibility forms today to the to the uh, DEC so that he has his eligibility list out there and. I'm like, Coach, you know, you, you don't have to do these until your first match or whatever. He's like, Coach, it's right around the corner. I'm like, holy moly. Yeah. I had no idea they were starting so quick. But, yeah, we're full force cross countries going and a running and getting after and get ready to do their thing. And not too much longer later when school starts, we'll get our our uh, our uh, spring golf teams going too. So it's we're full swing. Yeah, and uh, tennis plays Thursday at Mineral Wells. They've mm -hmm. got Fossil Ridge at 9 in the morning and Mineral Wells at 1.30. So. Yep. Yeah, it's here for everybody. It is. It's for everybody. So it's it's a good time. Definitely, definitely. So anything else we need to talk about today, Coach? I think we hit it, didn't we? I think we so. We better thank those sponsors, Auto Glass Magic, Brunner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper, <coughs> Dr. Pepper Bothling Company, Edward Jones Investments, Hendrick Medical, Howie Enterprises, Humphrey Peets, Landmark Admin, MC Bank, Painter Johnson Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willis Teeds. All right. That'll put a wrap on today's show, and we will back, be back Wednesday. Talks more Lions football here on the Brownwood Lions Coach Show on KOXE, KOXE.com, and the KOXE app. Have a great day, Brownwood.